Okay everyone, this is an illustration on how to set out a common rafter or a guide rafter uh, using a site square method, which uh, usually is uh, set up on site. Here, uh, in this illustration here, it basically you have two rafters held together to form an L on the ground, so this would be your board's eye view as it were, or your plan view of it. Um, up here in all the animations, so um, here we have one leg of the square, which as I said is basically another rafter. You pick a fairly straight one. And then you can get another shorter after if you like. And these have to form an L, and that L, those two legs of the L must be 90 degrees to each other. So you can use the 3, 4, 5 method here, go 3 maybe meters one direction. Uh, like here, for instance, go 4 meters that way and keep moving both legs until you have 5 meters uh, from, this from this point here to this point there. And then you know that it's a 90 degree angle you're holding. And uh, just to illustrate that you're dealing with right angle triangles here, which is a lot, a lot of case in Capricorn January. And here's a brace thing to keep those two legs 90 degrees popped in place there, uh, calculating the rise distance. Often in Ireland, well, more, all the time in Ireland, when you're getting the plans of a roof, um, the roof, the, it's the pitch of the roof you're given. In other countries, it might be different, like the United States, but in, in Ireland, it's the pitch. So if you need to be able to calculate the rise from that. So this, you know, you'll really need to use this formula here and make sure your scientific calculator is in degree mode. So basically you just tap in half the span of the roof, hit the multiplication side, hit the tan button, pop in the pitch of your roof, hit equals and hey presto, there's your rise distance. That gives you the distance to measure up on one leg of your square. And just to illustrate what pitch basically means, it goes from a zero degree up to, you know, this degree here, which might be 30 degrees away in this case. There's your rise distance there now. Just another illustration here, just to illustrate the right angled triangle relationship that's um, present in your in your uh, in your typical pitch roof. Just remember that this is called the two thirds line here, the hypotenuse of the right angled triangle, and that how that's how the rafter actually relates to it. So that line is two third or two third one third into the raft from below, or two thirds above, in other words. So just bear that in mind, and at that point it comes to the outside of the wall plate, by the way, of that right angle triangle, not to the inside. So just bear that in mind when you're visualising a right angle triangle when it's superimposed against a, a vertical section through a pitch roof, as is the case here. Uh, often you hear the terms run. Run, run means um, a, a, a distance measured on a level plane, or on, or on a horizontal plane, in other words. So in this case you have your common rafter run, which is on a horizontal plane. And here's your tail run distance on again on a horizontal plane. And uh, those are the planes you're measuring then uh, along this um, this this longer leg of your square. So from here to here is the uh, common rafter run, which is half the span typically. And from here to here then of course is the vert it's on a vertical plane, so that's the rise, which is the opposite. It's the, that's measured on a on a vertical plane. So here it comes into view here uh, as I animated here. And again, just to show you the hypotenuse of that right angle triangle right here again, so as you can visualize it in terms of a right angle triangle and how it relates to um, your typical pitch roof. And here's your tail run then, usually from the outside of the wall plate out to here is the horizontal distance again, as I said. You mark that on your side square, just bear that in mind. And usually you label, you label that as well here and here, you know, that this is the rise and this is the common after run and this is the tail run, you put an arrow to it. Um, the point being made here in this particular case is when we position the rafter then on this that hypotenuse will then <clears throat> to make it easier to mark will actually just hold the, the top side of the rafter or the back of the rafter <clears throat> in line with that line rather than trying to hold it on the two thirds line so just to make it simpler <clears throat> you'll still come up with the same result as you'll see earlier later on <clears throat> your um yeah this this relates to the cuts then on your rafter your plum cut will be at the top up near up by the ridge board and currently where I'm clicking on here that line represents the center of your ridge board <coughs> so later on towards the end you'll have to take away half the ridge board after you've marked the rafter <coughs> so um, usually you put your bevel up there and you'll swing the blade of your bevel so it aligns with this rise leg that means you then have the plumb cut angle from here to here is your plumb cut angle then you mark that with your pencil that's, as I said before, that's the centre line of your ridge board at the moment, so bear that in mind as well. Your heel cut's going to occur down here. It's the it's the back of your bird's mouth, but it's this is the same the same angle as the plum cut. So we'll be sliding this bevel down now and marking that line there. It represents the back or the outside of the wall plate. It correlates to the outside of the wall plate, which is the back of the bird's mouth with the same line, same surface. 
the fascia cut then again it's the same angle doesn't change so we'll be sliding that bevel down here same as the plum cut angle the only thing we need to find out the position so if we just get an, a square of any sort corner piece of plywood or anything or a, a, a roof and square large roof and square that'll give you the position and then mark your plum cut there for your fascia and that's your fascia cut right there mark your waist of course as always with your nexus and afterwards of course that's just cut off cut off the next thing you have to think about is you're going to have to mark the, the seat cut or the level portion of your bar's valve, which will be recording here. So again, you're going to slide your bevel up to here and you're going to align the blade with the run leg on your square. So you're going to see that occurring here now in this little illustration here. Um, when you have that done, then you're going to slide it back down here and then we're going to complete the bird's mouth, the marking of the bird's mouth. So there we are, we've just swung it there to align with it, the blade on the bevel, and that's now going to get slid down here to mark out your bird's mouth right here of course you measure down two thirds um, really and truly you don't want to go any more than a third into the rafter with this bird's mouth otherwise you will weaken the rafter at this point you want to be very careful you don't go any uh, cutting and past that so a third is the most i recommend that means it's two thirds above of course uh, so there's your bird's mouth marked out so here we have then the rafter cuts so after that then the cut there's your fascia cut just cut off there again you'll be cutting this with a skill saw here the bird's mouth and then up at the top here you're cutting that off as well, uh, which is still in the centre of the ridge board, so we'll have to deduct later on there for half the ridge thickness. Uh, in relation to the soffit cut, there's a soffit cut sometimes occur down here, but not always. It always depends on various things. Uh, the position of the where the, the position of the fascia board will eventually end up being. Here's some slate and lads pop down. Recreate this situation here, your eaves detail, uh, vertical sections, what you're creating. You always leave a gap here, by the way, so this the slate springs down when you nail it so it won't be flapping here so that's the situation one so here you can see you actually don't need a soffit cut so you'd be wasting your time and you'd only make the joint weaker actually between the between the face and the rafter if you did put one here in this case we will need as you can see when we created this situation it was a different size fascia board maybe a different pitch who knows and um, we will need seat cut and in some case you have a, an under slate vent here which would push down the fascia a bit more so you actually if you factor that in you might need have uh, needed to uh, put a soffit cut here neither so you recreate that vertical section of the eaves detail and that will tell you whether or not or what the position is of your uh, soffit cut which is the same angle by the way as your seat cut so basically just a few points here yeah as i said earlier don't forget to deduct half the thickness of the ridge board and by the way that deduct deduction is always measured square off the plumb line do not measure it along the rafter they must be measured 90 degrees off the plumb cut that measurement typically your fascia back in and your ridge board are the same size seven inch by one and a half inch uh, also it's good idea to cross check yeah sometimes it's nice to know for with, with another method uh, have you the raft with the right length for instance so if you just um tap in half the span of your roof which is the run hit the division sign uh hit the cost button pop in the degrees of your roof hit equals and presto that'll be the line length from the middle of your uh, ridge board down to the bird's mouth along the line length of your rafter and the other point made here is look at if the roof is small enough like a dormer roof you don't need to make up a nail on the ground uh, you know you can use the corner of the eight before sheet because the two edges of the sheet obviously are 90 degrees to each other so why would you bother making up a nail in that case you know?